Winter's story has inspired millions, but we measure it one person at a time. Watch the power of a connection. I love Winter. She means a lot to me because she taught me to never give up and to be an inspiration to others. I really love Winter because she taught me that I can do anything. Winter has taught me that it is okay to have flaws and that being different is what makes us who we are. Winter inspires me because she helps kids with disabilities and that it's awesome to be different. I love Winter. She inspires me because she shows me that even if we do have a disability or a problem with our body, we can do what others can, no matter what. My name is Sydney. I'm six years old. I love Winter because she's beautiful even though she's different. Winter is my surgery buddy. My name is Rachel DeMarco and I've had eight surgeries. I'm going on to my night. When I see how great Winter does with her prosthetic tail, it gives me hope that I will be able to walk all by myself. The night Winter arrived was pretty chaotic. Trying to get your head wrapped around the whole situation. And based on the condition of her body and what her tail flukes looked like when she arrived, we knew that you know she was critical and she may not last the night. Well, it was just after first light. I was heading out and the, uh, the crab traps were uh, out pretty thick. I happened to notice one that was not laid over in the wind like all the other ones. So I got off the throttle and motored over there and Winter came up and kind of took a big gasp of a breath. There was probably maybe 10 coils of the rope right at the base of her tail. As soon as I cut the rope in the middle, she sprung open. When I first saw her, she was sitting right next to Jim's boat and she wasn't moving. So I knew immediately that it was a serious situation. And I was sitting in the water holding her. So I just lifted my right hand up and I looked at her tail and it was, it looked horrific. And when we picked her up from the water, we could see that her tail was kind of fluttering. The entanglement injuries at the tail was just an entire area that was just kind of constricted and damaged. At that point, I realized she could die. So once the um, the transport crew got there, they brought a stretcher that's specially designed for whales and dolphins. And they kind of came alongside me and dropped the stretcher under her and then I kind of moved out of the way and they lifted up the stretcher around her. Presented by Visit St. Pete Clearwater whose 35 miles of white sand beaches and world-class art scene landed it on the New York Times list of the world's top places to go. Plan your own adventure at liveamplified.com. Shh, can you feel it? That vibe, it's here on America's best beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. Every hour. Bring some inspiration into your home. Go to seawinter.com and get your authentic Clearwater Marine Aquarium merchandise. Handled and shipped directly to you from the real life Clearwater Marine Aquarium team. Enjoy the same great quality toys, gifts, and clothing items guests take home during their exciting visit to the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Great gift items, or for yourself. Even better, you'll be helping care for our rescued animals. Thank you for your support of our work. She was a young animal. 
We knew that she had been out in the water entangled long enough to have sustained significant injuries. So she probably hadn't been nursing for a while. Um, young animals stress out very easily with their mom. Oh, well, due to winter's condition and the fact that she was a young calf with a significant injury, we were advised to euthanize her. When I first saw Winter's tail flukes in the water, and in fact I picked them up and I held them in my hands, I wasn't sure what to think. Uh, I had never experienced an animal losing a significant part of the body like that and actually surviving. In fact, the fact that she was still alive and had tail flukes that were in these conditions uh, was something that I had never experienced before. So. When I held her tail flukes, I could tell they were flimsy. They were, they were not firm the way that flukes should be. But we still hadn't comprehended the fact that she could even lose her tail flukes. We were actually trying to get a blood sample from her flukes. Um, and clearly we weren't gonna get it because the tissue had already become necrotic. But that hadn't processed in our minds yet because that was unheard of. Your mind just doesn't go there yet. Um, it, it took that night and the following morning for everybody to really conclude that yes, this is going to happen and this tissue is going to shed from her body and she won't have tail flukes anymore. It was definitely difficult at times to keep it together. Um, there was a lot of questioning about what exactly was happening with her, um, her tail flukes specifically because we could see that she has tail flukes, but clearly the tissue looked as if it was necrotic. There's never a feeling of, of giving up, um, even in the hardest cases. And winter certainly was a very difficult case from the get-go. It was difficult because, you know, she is a young animal that's in need and you want to hold her and make her feel secure. So you're going to make yourself vulnerable. Um, you're going to get emotional about it. Honestly, the next morning when we had a conversation with our veterinarian and it was kind of laid out that this is her condition, this is what's going to happen, it, you know, you start crying. The story of winter helped me to know that even if everybody around you thinks something is impossible, you can make it happen if you try your best. And now I love dolphins even more. Winter means to me to always believe good things will happen and to never give up hope. I want winter this summer. I love winter because she, she symbolizes perseverance. I hope to be able to be in the video. Thank you. Winter really took it upon herself, obviously we didn't teach her, um, to move side to side. And I'm assuming that because she had no other options, that's why she started that movement. Um, we saw that very early on. So that was really good. That was a good thing. She was now swimming on her own. But it was a bad thing in that it's not physiologically correct for them. Winter was swimming in a side to side motion. And that'll become something that can develop into a painful situation as she gets older. Once Winter started moving side to side, which is what she needed to do to stay afloat and to swim because she didn't have a tail, what was that going to do? You look at it is that without a physical tail there to exercise those vertebrae, she'll eventually get to the point where her muscles will contract more and more and more, and at one stage it'll actually reach a plane where those vertebrae don't move at all. Dolphin physiology, and in the way they're built, is designed for that up and down motion. That's the way the muscles are designed. Her spine will actually start to deform in a number of different directions. It'll deform from an up and down perspective, which is a typical movement for a dolphin, but in utilizing the side to side without something stopping it from getting worse, she'll start to get worse and worse curvatures laterally as well. It could perhaps make her more susceptible to arthritis or, you know, other type of long-term problems. To where you see people walking with these very jerky movements as they're no longer able to move the way they should. That same thing can happen to a, any other species, including winter. And we really had nothing to go on because there wasn't a dolphin without a tail. She was a first. When you live amplified in St. Pete Clearwater, 
you dive deeper into every crazy, cool, connected moment. Come feel the pulse at liveamplified.com. The idea of a prosthetic tail came up and it seemed crazy. It seemed pretty far out there and I didn't believe it. I honestly didn't think it was possible. So at some point we met with Kevin at Hanger Clinic and um, obviously he's taken her on as a patient for life and he had some pretty far out ideas. I was driving home from work one evening and heard a story about this little dolphin who just lost his tail. I was thinking to myself, yeah, we put prosthetics on people, why not a tail on a dolphin? So I picked up the phone, I called Clearwater Marine Aquarium and said, you know, we can put a tail in your dolphin. I, I know initially they thought I was crazy in the head, but to quickly realize I was serious. I called my colleague Dan Strimka, I said, Dan, we have this project. First thing I thought when I hung up the phone with Kevin after discussing this with him was, should I tell anybody? They're gonna think I'm crazy. He says, why not? Now, there was really no point in the whole process, even from the very beginning, that. I didn't think we could do it. We spent numerous hours at the aquarium working as a team. There were so many different people of different expertise that truly came together. With a team in place, Kevin, Dan, and the Hanger Clinic team went to work. Hanger Clinic has been around for 150 years, and as you can imagine, it takes a lot of technology to build a prosthetic limb. Marrying ingenuity and high technology, the team searched for new methods to solve the many obstacles they had to overcome. It's the first time there's a full prosthetic tail built for a dolphin. But like any major innovation, there were challenges. And there were some big ones. The biggest challenge we were soon to face was how are we going to keep this tail on her and not have it hurt her skin? So we had to come up with a very protective material, similar to what we're using on humans, but with some additional benefits or characteristics. We wanted softness, we wanted flexibility, we wanted sticky and tacky. That's what locks the prosthesis in place. It's a sealed environment. And we actually roll on her skin, put the tail on, and then another similar gel goes over the top to basically hold it on with suction. We put all the minds together and come up with a very, very incredible, inspirational solution to hold the prosthesis in place. It's now known as winter's gel. Guess who got to check out Winter's Gel before winter? Dan Strimka. I'm an amputee and have dealt with the issues of pressure and rubbing and all that. So I ended up being the guinea pig So we didn't want to try something on winter that has never been tried before. Oftentimes you hear about animals testing product before it's ever used on humans. But in this case, the product was used on the human before it ever went to the animal. And it was excitingly amazing how comfortable this product was. People in nearly every country began to hear of this young dolphin with such a big heart, seemingly unafraid of her disability. In fact, she had to learn to swim all over again. Her trainers began to slowly teach her what she had likely forgotten, an up and down swimming motion. Like a child learning to walk, Winter was led around the pool by her training team, one stroke at a time. Since then, she's become a seasoned pro and has adapted to both swimming methods. She doesn't have time to worry about being different. Recently, Dan and I came up with a new tail, and it's actually black. And the advantage of the black is that we can diagnose dynamics of swimming in the water, motion analysis. So we have to use materials that are allowing us to do this type of analysis. We can change the dynamics of this very, very easily. And I could imagine coming back 20 years from now, and there'll be some incredible technologies that we'll be putting on winter and who knows what she will inspire in the future. Stay tuned for part two of Winner's Story, Winner's Inspiration. You just saw the amazing life struggles she lived through. In part two, you'll see how she comes out on top, inspiring an entire generation to believe.
If winner can, I can. Thank you.